continuing to build up this project with the plain old telephone service. Last time I just had the ESP8266 generating call progress tones in this speaker as a demo, both North America and UK tones. So I was just cycling through with the serial monitor pressing N every time I wanted to play the next tone. Now I've got this slick module, which is subscriber line interface circuit. This is a KS0835F, and I made this breakout board in the past using this module here. So I can plug in a phone and give it a power source. And then by controlling a couple of pins, I can tell this to make a phone actually ring with phone ring voltages. And when the phone is picked up off hook, this generates an output signal that I can detect, so I can use this to do a lot of control when I plug in a phone. And because I plan to expand this system even further, there's only so many GPIO on the ESP8266, so I'm using a PCF8574 GPIO expander so that just over the two I2C wires, I can read the switch hook to tell when this phone is picked up, and I can control this slick module to generate ring voltages and make the phone physically ring when I want. And my flowchart skills are not that great, but looking at this newer flowchart, I can still cycle through generating those call progress tones. So I'll do that now if I reset the module. It tells me that when I compiled, I set it for the UK region this time, and it's starting up, it's idle, and I can press N to cycle through all the test call progress tones for the UK region, or I can press R to make the phone actually ring, or I can pick the phone up off hook and I'll hear a UK dial tone being generated in this speaker just to continue building this system. So cycling through, if I press N and enter, Then eventually I get back to the idle state when I press N enough times. So now I'll pick up the phone and hear the dial tone. No, something's all weird. All right, what went, what went wrong? See here, it's telling me it's getting basically an IRQ repeatedly now, saying the phone is off hook. So to me, it's like there's a loose wire. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start over. Reboot, okay. Now quickly I'll cycle through those tones again just to see if I get this in the same state. See that it's not a bug. Okay, now I'm back where I was originally trying to pick the phone up off hook and hear a dial tone. Now it's working. Sometimes this has been happening throughout the day and I have to move things around. It's most likely, hopefully, these DuPont wires, who knows how old they are and they keep kind of getting a little loose. So I move things around and they start working. I'm hoping that's what it is. So again, pick this up. It tells me with the light, it's off hook, and then the sketch generates the dial tone. So that's just to show where I'm going with all of this. But now if I press R in the serial monitor to make it ring, it will ring and then wait for me to pick it up. And because of the way the sketch is, once I pick it up, it'll go away from the ring mode back to idle. And because it's still picked up, it'll just do that other demo where it shows the light and plays dial tone. So there's the UK ring, and if I answer it, of course it gave me the dial tone as expected. I'll ring it again. So generally it looks like what I've set up so far does work. It's just bad wiring. So when I get a final designed PCB 
incorporating everything. I hope it works a lot better. So since I'm still working on this, I don't have anything like a schematic. All I really have is these visuals and whatever is mentioned in the sketch. But I'm also making notes and observations. So one thing I noticed is when the phone is ringing, if I pick it up and the module here is going to send me basically an IRQ saying the phone is picked up, and then I'm supposed to recognize that and then stop ringing. I found I had to set the phone frequency for the ring signal or at least 40 hertz. If it was any slower, originally I set it for 20, it will ring. But if I pick it up while it's actually ringing and not just being silent on the other part of the ring, it somehow cannot generate this off-hook signal while it's generating an output ring voltage. I'm not sure what's going on and why setting it to 40 hertz ring tone or greater seems to do any better. It might be that it can't really sense that it's off hook while its control pins and its output voltages are in a certain state. Maybe making it run faster gives it more time slices to detect I picked it up. I'm not sure what's going on. But for now, it's a, a workaround to just change the frequency and the phone still responds. So things like that I may just leave as is. The phone line module here is not the best documented thing. So as long as it's working at all, it's a win for prototyping. So here's the data sheet for this module. Has a bunch of general specs, but when I try to look up more specific details, if I'm not mistaken, I cannot even find in here the actual input and output logic signal levels. Like what is a guaranteed input logic high and logic low level. So I was having a little trouble with that. I have to look into it as well. For example, if I'm running the system at 5 volts versus at 3.3 volts, and I'm hooking it up to the GPIO expander, the voltages I'm seeing on this module for an output logic high going into 5 volts on my GPIO expander input, I think I was seeing something like 3.3 or 3.4 volts to represent logic high to me. And I would like that to be a little higher. So I may even try powering it from 3.3 and see if the logic out high is any better. There's probably just lots of weird things going on in the design of this, but I'm just trying to get it up and running. It's not like I need it to be absolutely perfect or anything. So the unfolding sketch here, I still have the same call progress sound synthesizer library happening here and my main top level sketch the same file name as the folder name so Arduino will load this again now that I'm adding more features it's really getting congested in here but I'll see if I can highlight some of the things going on so I set the region UK or North America by using one or the other byte definitions and then it knows how to make the ringtones and for the slick module, it's got three pins. Switch hook is the output from the module into ESP to tell me if it's on hook or off hook. And these other two pins I use to either be in normal mode or ring mode, where I toggle forward reverse at whatever frequency. In this case, I'll be using 40 hertz to generate a ring voltage out to the phone bunch of variables here that I'm using within the sketch. For example, similar to how I'm generating tones for call progress, when I'm actually ringing the phone with that slick module, I have to control how long the ring is sounding and then silent and possibly sounding and possibly silent again. Whether I'm in North America or UK, it's going to be on and off at different rates as it rings the real phone. So I control that similar to how I did with the call progress tones. Here I currently set the phone to ring at 45 hertz. And then I do a calculation to figure out the period of this frequency in milliseconds. So I know how long to tell the module to start ringing and then stop ringing. I created this system flag byte. And currently at least I'm using two flags so that Whenever it's convenient, I can get a current status of whether the phone is on or off hook and whether I am currently ringing it. And I just keep these as flags here so it's faster for me to access throughout the sketch instead of going out and reading a GPIO or something. The system has to run with as 
few operations as possible for the sound synthesizer to work smoothly without glitches and hiccups. So for example, I don't want to start generating a ring signal on the phone line if it's already off hook. You can only ring the phone when it's on hook, so I just check flags for things like this. So in the setup, based on whatever region I set, I just print a reminder in the serial monitor for how I'm set up. And like the previous revision of this project, I go and initialize the call progress audio synthesizer library. And now with the PCF8574 GPIO expander, I have to start configuring that. And with the phone line slick module, I have to initialize that. And because I'm now waiting for an interrupt to tell me when the phone has gone off hook, I set up an interrupt routine here. And I'm using an LED to tell me when the phone is picked up to help with debugging. The main loop starts here and ends right here. So I have to keep this as fast as possible. So I'm only doing the bare minimum things here. First, if there has been an IRQ, I'll detect that because I'll have set a flag elsewhere. And then I just want to go and verify if the phone's been picked up or not. Otherwise, if the phone is supposed to be ringing right now, I'll go out and do what I need to do to be controlling that slick module to control the phone to make it ring. If not, we don't need to bother going out there wasting time. And of course, for now, I'm controlling commands in the serial monitor, so I need to check if there's been a character. And then, just like the previous revision, if I'm supposed to be generating a call progress tone, I'll go out and do that, sending out audio samples from the Mozzie synthesizer. Otherwise, I need to go and check what's going on with the state machine and see if I need to switch modes or whatever else I need to do. So I already had this doing too much today, and the audio started glitching like maybe every couple of seconds I'd hear a little hiccup in it because I tried to keep this clean. This here, checking the IRQ if it's been set, I had that in a nice little function that I was calling from here to keep it looking clean. And as well, I had a function to go do this and check if it's time to ring the phone, and if so, handle ringing it. These were just two function calls, and I experimented with commenting one or the other or both out, and it just seemed like the time it takes to go execute a call to the function and do these things versus just doing them here, it made all the difference. So I'm hoping I don't get into a situation where I have to add even more to this main loop and mess up the audio when I'm generating call progress tones. But for now, this is running okay. I also started debug printing some of the system flags because all day I've been chasing bugs. So I wanted to know at any given time, is the phone on or off hook? And is it supposed to be ringing or not? And that helped me figure out a few bugs. Otherwise, we have our state machine as before, and I've added some new states, like generating an actual ring signal and generating the dial tone when I pick up the phone off hook. So I'm just doing a bunch of temporary states here to transition into. There's really not much to see here because all that happens is when it is time to do something, it just calls a function. So if I skip down to initialize the slick module, I access its control inputs over the GPIO expander interface, set them as outputs or inputs, and set them how I want. And I go and set up the ring pattern based on what region I'm in. And anytime if I want to know I'm on or off hook, I'll just read that flag out of the system flags so that it's faster than going and using the GPIO expander to actually check on the module if it's physically on or off hook. When this changes, I should get an IRQ and update that system flag anyway, so it just helps things run a little bit faster. And all of this stuff here for generating an actual ring on the phone, I won't go through the whole thing because it's the same process as generating the call progress tone rings, which are the ones you would hear in the speaker instead of the actual ring voltages making the phone ring but I'm doing it in the same on-off timing pattern. So I basically copied the process here. And if I'm going to be ringing the phone, I set the system flag to say that I am ringing so I can keep track of that. I start using timers and based on lapsed time, I'm controlling the ring voltages on the phone interface at the right frequency. 
and with the right on-off pattern for UK or North America. So that's basically where it's at for now. I'm just going to keep building up this sketch, adding more features, maybe adding more hardware, adjusting how it's being controlled, and ultimately I want to duplicate the setup and have a phone or a modem on each side and have all of this working together so one can call the other. 